Good morning, good morning and welcome to church this morning on Sunday the 1st of August 2021, a brand new month, pinch and a punch for the first of the month, it's lovely to see you here this morning. Now I'm back at work today and if you've been to Missley Church uh, this morning for the 9.30 service there you will have seen me there I hope. Um, but this is a pre-recorded service. I'm actually pre-recording this uh, a couple of weeks before um, because I've got some holiday coming up uh, and also I wanted to be able to stay at Missley um, after the service there um, to sort of see it through to the end and I have to rush away uh, for the online service. So this is pre-recorded and I'm pre-recording it several weeks in advance. Um, and what that means is, first of all, I can't say specific hellos or respond to specific comments um, or prayer requests and so on but I really do want to encourage you to be saying hello to one another in the comments as usual uh, and to be praying for each other and offering one another prayer requests in those comments as normal um, but yeah that's that's really what it means uh, this morning um, it also because I'm recording this several weeks in advance I'm actually still in self-isolation at the moment which is why I'm in the room upstairs in the rectory rather than in the study with the lights and the better camera and everything uh, so that's why the quality isn't quite as good as you might have grown used to online um, so please do forgive me for that um, but with all that said uh, let's begin by saying hello to one another it's really lovely to see you all here today my name is Reverend Dom Turner and I'm the vicar of Missley Manningtree and Bradfield and it really is a pleasure to welcome you here uh, into church this morning online as we gather to pray to worship and to hear from God's word and we we're going to begin by praying together using the words that are on the screen and as always you say the words that are in bold and gold let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. We will be praising God's name this morning. And as we come to God in praise and worship, we recognise, don't we, that we carry things in us that are wrong and broken and flawed and faulty. And we need to say sorry to God for those things that we've done this week uh, deliberately or unintentionally um, uh, that have taken us away from him and we turn back to him now seeking forgiveness which we know he offers us freely through Jesus Christ through the cross and the resurrection and the ascension of Christ this is good news and so we come to God now in sorrow for our failings but in hope of all that he will and can and does do for us we're going to use the words that are on the screen together O King enthroned on high filling the earth with your glory. Holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing together. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to worship. Now is the time to give your heart Come, just as you are to worship Come, just as you are before your God Now we 
Ephesians 4, verses 1 to 6. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Let's pray. Lord, as I speak this morning, would you speak through me, take the words I've prepared and use them to your glory, we pray. Amen. Amen. (laughs) This passage in Ephesians 4 marks a new point in Paul's letter. In the first three chapters, Paul lays out some of his doctrinal thinking. Uh, the things that we as Christians should believe. Paul tells us that we have spiritual blessings through Christ, that Jesus has power and authority and dominion, that by the grace of God and through the work of Christ, we are now all saved, that Jew and Gentile alike are united in Christ as one, that we are members of the body of Christ, that we are made a family and that God is at work in the church, bringing glory to Christ through us. And now, here in chapter 4, Paul begins by saying, therefore. Now, there's an old saying which you may have heard before. When it comes to the Bible, if you find a therefore, you have to ask what it's there for. Why does Paul begin this next section of the letter with therefore? Well, it's because the things he says next, some of which we'll look at today, follow on and come out of the things he's just said. In particular, there is a call on the church to be full of glory and to glorify Christ. And today's passage teaches us how we should respond to this call that we hear most clearly at the end of chapter 3. Paul begins today with a very vivid image. He tells his readers that he's literally begging them to lead a life worthy of the calling they've received, begging them. They're called to be the church, the united people of God. They're called to be blessed and to be a blessing. They're called to reveal the light and glory of Christ to all nations. This is their calling, and it's our calling too. But Paul knows that this is a high calling, and it's entirely possible that the people will fail. Not simply because they're incapable of achieving it, 
After all, Paul has told us clearly that the Spirit is at work in us in power and that this power is able to accomplish abundantly more than we can ask or imagine. That's in chapter 3, verse 20. No, Paul is worried that the people might fail because they refuse the calling. They might refuse to lead lives worthy of what God has called them into. This is not a failure to be powerful, but a powerful denial of God's calling. And Paul is desperate to make people see that it would be a big mistake to deny the work and power of God. He goes on to tell us how we are to live in order to live out this high calling. There are four attitudes of the heart that Paul highlights. Four ways in which we can live lives worthy of the calling that God has given us. These four areas, which are found in verse 2 of chapter 4, are humility, gentleness, patience and forbearance. Living in humility means putting our own desires, passions, ambitions and purposes below those of God. The calling of the church is to be full of God's glory and to reveal the glory of Christ. And we do this best by living in Christ-like ways. Now, the world we live in tells us that glory can be found in accumulation. We're glorified by the money we possess, the things we own or the titles we've earned. Now, this is not the way of Christ, who possessed very little, no money, no home, no qualifications. His glory is found in his humility. In Philippians chapter 2 verses 4 to 8, Paul tells us that each of us should look not only to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. We are called to reveal the glory of Christ to the world and to each other. And one way in which we do this is through humility. Now, we can't manufacture that, of course, but we can pray for it. And we can seek to eradicate pride and ambition in our hearts when we become aware of it. It's not easy or comfortable, but it is the calling to which we're called as we follow Jesus. Another way in which we live out our calling to reveal the glory of God is in gentleness. Gentleness isn't the same as niceness, but it often looks similar. Gentleness describes someone who is submissive to the word of God, someone who is disciplined and controlled. It describes someone who, when they're wounded by another, doesn't seek vengeance or to retaliate. Patience goes hand in hand with humility. We put others above ourselves and we don't hold on to grudges when others hurt or wound us. When Jesus was on the cross, he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And this is perhaps the ultimate act of gentleness. One of Aesop's fables gives us a glimpse into the power of gentleness. The north wind and the sun are having an argument about who is the most powerful. In order to resolve it, the sun points out a traveller on the ground below. Whoever can strip his cloak from him is the most powerful, he says. The wind agrees and is soon blowing as hard as he can. But the harder the wind blows, the tighter the man wraps his cloak around him. And in the end, the powerful wind has to concede defeat. Now the sun, of course, wins the argument by washing the man in gentle warmth, a gentle warmth which causes him to loosen and then remove his cloak. In our world of noise, politics and posturing, Gentleness may seem wishy-washy, old-fashioned and powerless. It hardly seems likely to us to reveal the glory of God. But we need to remember that this was one of the characteristics of Christ. 
but it's also far from powerless. A gentle word, the Bible reminds us in Proverbs 15, turns away wrath. The gentle power of water causes land to erode and slip into the waves. And the gentle warmth of the sun beats the blustering power of the wind. So Paul tells us to live in humility and gentleness. He also tells us to have patience. Now this goes along with gentleness. Patience means that even when we've been hurt by others, we're slow to respond. And certainly we're slow to respond in anger. Patience can be less personal than this too. Some of the things we have to endure are not direct attacks against ourselves or our characters, but rather the result of circumstances. As we've endured the restrictions of COVID over this last year, we've needed patience. We continue to need it, of course, as we travel through this next period together, trying to work out how to best respond in love and unity to the lifting of restrictions. Patience is a virtue which we can all work on. And as we persevere in patience, we learn more and more of it. If you, like me, find patience difficult, you might want to pray that God would help you, but be warned he might send you situations or people that stretch your patience as he answers that prayer. Patience is one of the key characteristics of love that we hear about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and enduring patience when we see it looks very much like love. And so we're asked to be humble, gentle and patient but we're also asked to show forbearance now my translation of the bible expresses this last one beautifully it says we are to bear with one another in love as the church called to reveal the glory of god to the world we have to be humble gentle and patient with one another but this doesn't always go to plan and we're to bear with one another when we get things wrong this is what the family of christ looks like Paul reminds us that we are one body, united in one spirit, with one calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and in all. And this unity is the most important thing. We're to be humble, gentle, patient and to show forbearance in order that we maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. That's verse 3. Paul tells us to make every effort to maintain this unity. It's through unity that the glory of Christ is revealed in us and through us. Now in John chapter 17, Jesus prays for his disciples and he prays for the soon to be formed church. His prayer begins all about glory. He says, Father, glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. Glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. The church is called to be part of this revelation of the glory of Christ. This is the calling we still have today to reveal Christ's glory, not simply to create new and exciting programs or activities, not simply to maintain or care for ancient buildings, not simply to be custodians of historical liturgies, not simply to be nice people doing nice things not simply to care for others pastorally. Now all of these things are good, but our calling is to glorify Christ in the world by being united together. And this is Christ's prayer too. Listen to the words of Jesus in his prayer for the church in John's Gospel. He says, I ask on behalf of those who will believe in me that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am to see my glory, which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. 
Brothers and sisters, we are called to live lives which reveal the glory of Christ and to be united with one another. This is a high and difficult calling, but we can work towards it by seeking to be humble, gentle, patient and in showing forbearance. Amen. Let's pray together. For the peace that comes from God alone, for the unity of all peoples and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Church of Christ, for Gully and Roger, our bishops, and for the whole people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nations of the world, for Elizabeth, our Queen, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the communities in which we live, for our neighbours and our friends, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and the orphans, for the sick and the suffering, and for all in any need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to God. For yours is the majesty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and for ever. Amen. The Collect for the First Sunday in August. Gracious Father, revive your church in our day and make her holy, strong and faithful. For your glory's sake, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Benefice Prayer. 
Lord God, we are your people, the church in this place. Help us to follow you more closely, praying as you teach us to pray, loving one another as you teach us to love, serving others as you teach us to serve, and growing in numbers, faith and depth of discipleship. Amen. And let's pray together as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been really lovely to see you here this week. We will be back again live next Sunday. Um, normal service resumes. So I hope to see you there. Go well and God bless you. Let's say the final blessing now. God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ as Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and rest upon you now and always. Amen. Amen. We're going to close by singing Send Us Out. I'll see you all very, very soon. You take care. Bye-bye. Send us out in the power of your spirit to shine your light in the way we live Send us out in the power of your spirit As we've received, may we freely give Send us out, send us out Send us out for your glory Let all we do be praise to you Send us out for your glory out in the power of your spirit to show your love everywhere we go send us out in the power of your spirit lord fill us up so we overflow send us out send us out send us out for your glory let's all Thank you.